Good day everybody, this is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I had some issues on the last video with the splicing, editing, and then ultimately uploading it. It looked like there were some pretty significant chunks of that video that aired out. So I wanted to do a quick reshoot and just focus on the high yield concepts that I covered in that lecture. And so this was a lecture pertaining to fascicular blocks. So let's just go ahead and run through how we can identify different fascicular blocks in a, in a stepwise, high-yield uh, fashion. So the first question we need to ask ourselves is, is there pathological left axis deviation? So maybe what I'll do is I'll go here, and I'll say, is there left axis deviation? And again, with fascicular blocks, uh, the left axis deviation tends to be rather pathological. Uh, so you're looking at you know negative 30, negative 40, negative 50 and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's the first question. Is there left axis deviation? And have I identified the common mechanisms for producing left axis deviation? If there's some real common mechanism that you've identified, then that very well may point to that mechanism as opposed to a, um, a, uh, a fascicular block. So keep that in mind. Um, so if the answer to that is yes, there is left axis deviation present, <clears throat> the next question that you need to ask yourself is, do I have a little r big S complex in the inferior leads? In my inferior leads. If the answer to that question is yes, this is strong evidence that supports the diagnosis of a left anterior fascicular hemiblock. Okay, so the, the anterior fascicle of the left bundle branch is blocked. All right, so just put, there we go. Now, we need to ask some additional questions because we could very well have other things going on. Okay, so the next question that you want to ask is, okay, I've identified that there's a left anterior fascicular hemiblock. The next question you want to ask is, um, is there, and maybe I'll, I'll put it down here, uh, we'll go down here, is there a bundle branch block? Uh, is a right bundle branch block present? If the answer to that is yes, okay, that tells us that the right bundle branch is blocked and one of and the left anterior fascicle is blocked, and so that would give us a bifascicular block. A bifascicular block. And then the final question that we need to ask ourselves, is, is there any form of AV block? All right, is there any form of AV block going on? Okay, first degree, second degree, type one, type two, third degree. If there is, then I in fact have a trifascicular. I in fact have a trifascicular block. All right, so again, Ask, is there, is there left axis deviation? Yes. Are there um, little r, big S complexes in my inferior, in the inferior leads rather? And again, that's two, three, and augmented vector front would be the inferior leads. The answer to that is yes. You have a left anterior fascicular hemiblock. Okay. And then you need to ask some additional questions. If you identify that, you need to ask, is there a right bundle branch block uh, concomitantly occurring, if the answer to that is yes, then in fact you have a bifascicular block. You still have the left anterior fascicular hemiblock, but you also have a blocked right bundle branch, and so you have two quote-unquote fascicles blocked. And then the last question you ask is, is there any form of AV block? If there is, that gives you a trifascicular block, even though the uh, AV junction is not technically a fascicle of a bundle branch. Um, this uh, vernacular, rather a vernacular uh, term is still commonly used to identify that the phenomena of uh, um, a, a delay of conduction or a block uh, through the uh, junction 
in addition to a, a right bundle branch block and one of the two um, fascicles on the left bundle branch being blocked. Uh, so clearly this is a rather tenuous situation uh, when you run into trifascicular block territory um, and this may be a patient that will be at risk for deteriorating into some sort of escape rhythm so you want to be ready to uh, pace that patient if needed. Now if the answer up here going back to the top is no okay to the left axis deviation then ask is there right axis deviation and again you want to account for some of the common things that can cause that and there are rather fewer things that cause right axis deviation as opposed to left axis deviation and if the answer to that is in fact yes then you ask do I have little r big s uh, complexes in the high high lateral leads okay high lateral wall leads so that would include uh, one and augmented vector left are my uh, high lateral leads and if the answer to that is yes then this gives you a rather rare fascicular block, but this is the left posterior fascicular hemi block. Okay. This is tends to be a bit much more rare than an anterior fascicular hemi block, but we still want to throw that in. And and there you have it. There you have a, a relatively easy and concise uh, method for identifying uh, fascicular blocks. And again, it requires that you um, are able to interpret um, QRS morphology in the inferior and high lateral leads, in addition to being able to determine axis deviation. So if you're not up on that, um, I, would, I would ask that you reference uh, prior videos at where we've talked about um, axis deviation specifically. Uh, okay, hopefully uh, this particular recording turns out a little better. Um, I'll try to upload it as soon as I can. And as always, thanks for hanging in there.